Hello everyone, this is Steph from Student CRM and I'm joined by Andy B today. Hi everyone. Um, in this session, we'll be looking at courses and subjects. Um, and you can see on the screen here, I've got the dashboard up and courses and subjects is here on the dashboard. We're in the New Forest University demo university, obviously not a real one today. Um, so to get into courses and subjects, we're just gonna click on this icon here. And there we go. Well, now we're into courses and subjects. Mm. So, so Steph, what is the Courses and Subjects app used for? Okay, so the Courses and Subjects app is the beating heart of Student CRM. It's essentially where all of your courses and subject lists are stored, and those are then uh, used with, throughout Student CRM in apps like Pre-Applicant Open Days um, and on all of your web forms as well. So when, wherever you see a drop down with courses or subjects in it, um, that information is driven from the Courses and Subjects app. It's also very useful in things like applications as well. Mm. Okay, so who would mainly use this app? Okay, so this is going to be used by lots of different departments within the universities, marketing, recruitment, um, probably also by your admissions team. They'll need to, to be aware of the Courses and Subjects app. Uh, but obviously, it's um, uh, quite an, a key central part of the system. So it will be probably quite, le quite tightly managed by um, uh, key staff at the university to make sure that it's kept accurate and up to date. Hmm. Okay, that's clear. Okay, so now we're going to have a little look at the structure of courses and subjects um, as an app. Um, and I'm going to take you on a little tour. So we're going to go through um, the tabs at the top here. We've got years of entry, courses, subjects, and campuses. Um, and then I'll have a little look at what's in the setup as well. So we'll go through each part of the app in turn. So the place we start off <clears throat> is years of entry. And years of entry just gives you a full list of all of the um, years of entry that are available on, on the courses app. Um, and they're listed by level of study, year of entry, and then the, it'll give you an idea of the number of courses stored in that list. So if you think of each of these as a different list, and you can filter these lists by just the um, drop down up here, the years of entry one. So I can say, okay, I want to look at 2021. And then I'm going to look at um, each year of, uh, level of study, which is available. So you've got undergraduate, uh, postgraduate, part time, and postgraduate full time in 2021. And if I want to filter even further, I can just go, okay, I'm only interested in undergraduate and then all years of entry. And it'll just give me the lists for each year of entry um, and that level of study. So that's pretty self explanatory. Okay, I'm just going to click now into the next tab, which is courses. And that brings up a full list of all courses. And you can see here that um, on my screen, I've got a list of 1 to 50 of 4,911 courses. Wow. Now, that's quite a massive list, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, what I'm going to show you now is probably um, a simple way of just finding the courses that you're looking for. Because obviously, when you're managing courses or you need to edit a course, having a huge list of nearly 5,000 courses isn't very useful. So on this tab, we can actually filter. So we can, again, just like on years of entry, we can filter by years of entry, by campus. So obviously each course can belong to a campus and you can filter by campus. You can filter by levels of study, faculties, um, and you can also study um, filter by statuses. So draft or live. Um, and each course um, has a status of either draft or live on the system. Um, you can also do free text searches, so you can search for things like the name of a course, um, the course code, um, the course tag, and tags are like a flexible way of sorting your courses, and you can also search, search by qualification as well. So for instance, if I was looking for um, courses which involve um, building, I could just type in building, and my list will begin to shortlist and I will get courses which just involve the word building in their title. Um, I can then filter that further by saying, okay, uh, that's fine, but I know I want 2021 courses with building. And then that brings up those ones. And then I can filter even further and say, I want undergraduate building courses. And I'm left with just the one. Mm, so that's brilliant. a really quick and easy way of filtering courses down. Mm. Cool, is that clear? Yeah, yeah, that's very clear, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, okay. How would you go about adding a course? Ah, okay, right, lovely. So um, what I'll show you first actually is how to edit an existing course. So if we just look at this building survey one here, mm -hmm. um, you can go in and you can just view it just by clicking on the view button here. Um, and that just gives you the basic details of it. 
Um, but you can also edit it just by clicking on the edit button if you've got the right permissions. Then that takes you into the course details. Um, and you've got year of entry at the top um, and the course level, which are fixed, but all the other details of the course can actually be edited by you. So you can change the course name, you can add in an additional course code if you want to. Um, obviously you can change the course, the UCAS code if needed. This is also where you change the, the status from draft to published on an individual basis, add tags, add in qualifications, campuses, change the faculty um, and add a department if you want to, and also mark it as available for international. Um, and then down the bottom here, you've got the course URL, so you can add in a course URL, um, and you can also um, change intake, so you can add in an additional intake like January 2022, for instance, if you wanted to. Um, and also within the course edit screen, you can drag and drop uh, which subjects this course belongs to. Now we're going to talk a little bit about, about subjects in a second, so I won't go into too much detail, but just to say that on each course record, you can change the subject that it's in just by dragging and dropping. So that's the, uh, the course card. Um, so sorry, um, Andy, what was your question again? So how would you add a course? How would you add a new course? Uh, okay, of course, yes. So adding a course is really simple. Um, you can do it um, at any point when you're in the courses tab. And you'll see that there's just a little plus here, and you just click on plus. And then it brings up a dialog box, which asks you to select the level of study and the year of entry for your course. So I'm going to add a new undergraduate course for 2022, and just click add. And that brings up just as you um, saw before, you saw that um, edit screen. Mm -hmm. So this is just a blank version of that edit screen, essentially. So it's got exactly the same fields on it. Um, and you can go in and you can add in your course name, code, and all the information um, about your course. Um, and then you can tick the intakes as well. Um, just to, um, a little word that you do need to select at least one intake on your course to, to be able to save it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's how you add a course one by one. Mm. Cool. And okay. if you wanted to add a whole load of courses in one go, I suppose you wouldn't just keep pressing the plus button. Would you, is there a quick way of doing that? Yeah, there is. Um, obviously, I think if you're going, if you're adding like up to five, then probably clicking the plus button is, a, is an easy enough way to do it. But with a bulk entry of courses, mm. for, for instance, maybe you've got um, a new uh, level of study that you want to add into the system and you want to add all the courses for that level of study, then um, my, my advice would be to do it using something called Data Importer. Um, if you click on the little jump menu or you go back to the dashboard, you'll see that we've got an app called Data Manager. If we click into that data manager app, you'll see there's a tool in the toolbox called Data Importer. Now that is a multi-purpose tool and that allows you to import CSV data into lots of places in student CRM. And one of the places that you can import that data is courses and subjects. So you can use um, a CSV file um, and obviously there's lots of guidance on how to create that file and what information to put into it. But you can use that file to um, up, upload new courses as many as you need to in one go, and also to update existing courses as well. So just by using the um, course ID number as a reference, you can update um, hundreds of new course, hundreds of existing courses at once. So okay. it's really useful. Yeah. Um, I won't go into the detail about how to do data imports at this point. That's actually the topic of another training session. So um, we won't talk about that now, but just to say that it's very a really flexible tool, which allows you to do quite big imports of courses. So that's one way of doing it. Um, there is also a second way. So if I just go back into the courses and subjects app, um, you'll see that over here, there's a little setup tab. And if I just click on that, you'll see there's something called add a year. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to clone actually from a previous year. Um, so that probably is the way that you would do it if you were um, just looking to duplicate from year to year. So if I'm just looking to duplicate from 2022 to 2023, then this is the way I would do it. So basically you just select the level of study. It'll then tell you the last live year, which is obviously 2023 on, in this case, and then it'll create a new year of entry for you. And that will basically be an exact duplicate of your 2023 courses into 2024, and they will be in draft. Um, and then you can just publish those as and when you need to. Oh, that's so really how, cool. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah, it's really helpful. Mm. Cool, brilliant, brilliant, okay. So let's just go back to the end. Um, and did we have any more questions about courses itself? Uh, no, no, not particularly, no. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so we'll move on to the next tab along then, which is subjects. 
So if we just click on to subjects, you can see that we've got, um, again, a full list of all of the subjects available and the years of entry. And we can filter that down by years of entry. So let's just say we're looking at 2021. And you can see that we've got um, 13 different subjects. Now, what is a subject? So a subject um, is essentially a collection of courses. Now, when you go to publish a web form, um, you might have a list of 150 different courses. And that's quite hard for a student to select from. It's a long list and it's quite hard to scroll through. So we allow you to sort your courses or categorize your courses into subject areas. And that allows you to have a subject filter on a web form, which then just shortlists those courses. So it makes a big difference in how usable your web forms are. So in this demo university, we've got 13 subjects um, and within each of those 13 subjects, there'll be a collection of courses. So for instance, finance has got 18 courses in it. If we wanted to have a little closer look at that, we just click into the, the magnifying glass and that just shows you which 13 courses are in the finance subject. So we've got um, some for postgraduate, some for um, full-time and some for postgraduate part-time. And then we've got eight courses for undergraduate as well, which is mm. quite useful. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the the what a, a subject actually is. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Cool, lovely. So that's very helpful for when you're creating for, um, forms. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and that's right. the key use of subjects is mm. to categorize your courses into um, nice little subgroups, so it's easier to use on forms. Right. So the student might know that they want to do something about finance, but they don't know which particular course. So they yeah, click that's exactly right. finance subject and then they're given an option uh, or a, uh, a list of courses such as these. Mm. Okay. Yeah, really. mm. So how can you add a course to a subject? All right then. Um, so we've got um, our finance courses here. So we can actually just go in and edit if we've got the right permissions. So click on the edit button. Um, and then you get a lovely little um, drag and drop facility, which allows you to take out courses and add courses um, really quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, for finance, for instance, I might want to add in, um, I think there's like an economics course I might want to add into there. There you go. So business economics, if I want to add that in, I just drag it over, simple as that. It turns green, it's in that course and that's live straight away. If I want to take something out again, I just drag it back the other way, bang, out. So really quickly, quick and easy to do. So I'm just going to put that one back in again and click save. Um, and now you can see that we've got undergraduate business economics as part of our finance subject. So that's a really easy way of uh, dragging and dropping courses in and out. How's that sound? Yeah, really good. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. So that's, that's the kind of arrangement of um, subjects. Um, right. What else do I need to talk about? Oh, yes, that's right. So um, one more thing to talk, mention about subjects is if you need to add a subject. Um, so you just get in touch with student CRM's customer support and we can add subjects for you. And that's really easy. It'll take us a few minutes, no problem at all. Um, but most of these subjects will probably be set up at the beginning when you um, when you first start with student CRM. Okay. okay so I'm just going to go back into um, the courses and subjects app. So it's great. So back into courses again. Right, so the next tab along um, after subjects is campuses. Mm -hmm. um, and campuses is just a really simple little bit of the system, which just allows you to set up different campuses. You can then um, basically decide which campus each of your courses belong to. Um, and that's again, useful for forms. So you might have forms that you need to add into um, various, um, you need to categorize by campus. Your students might want to choose by campus. So that's a really good way of um, just making that course list a bit shorter so they can select that they're interested in the Brockenhurst online um, campus and they can just go in there and, and um, select the course which is associated with that. You can edit and add the, to this list really quickly. Uh, it doesn't take very long to do. Just is that again, yeah, with the plus button to add a campus. That's exactly right, yeah. Okay. yeah. So <laughs> it's always the little plus at the top there that allows you to add and edit those. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, so there's just one more thing that I wanted to show you, um, which is over in the little setup button here, and that's download courses. Now, you might remember I mentioned a bit earlier um, about um, updating courses using mm. Data Manager. Mm. 
So if you wanted to make some um, quite extensive changes to a particular course list, so for instance, your undergraduate 2021 list needed to make have some considerable changes to made to it. Mm -hmm. What you would do is just click on undergraduate and 2021 and click the download CSV button. And that would provide you with a full um, download spreadsheet of all the details of those courses. And then you can make your edits to that and then re-upload that to the um, data, using the data importer tool. And that'll um, provide the edits um, and update the courses in one, one go for you. You can also download course lists for offline analysis or for um, just to so basically, so you've got a, a one screen view of all of your courses as well. So that's quite a useful tool. Okay. Okay. So that's, and that, um, that's, that's for a super user, is it? Because it's exactly under the right. setup cog. That's exactly right. So everything in this little cog here is just available for super users. Okay. So Only the chosen few. The chosen few. Exactly right. Okay. Um, so is there anything else in the courses and subjects app? That no, I no, I think that's fine. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So there is um, another app which is associated with courses and subjects. And this is just a really simple little um, app that we've got called Faculties. So you might have noticed that when I was um, editing courses, they all have to belong to a faculty. Mm -hmm. And the faculties list is stored under the faculties app. And it basically gives you an ID, the name of the faculty, and then departments which are available to that. So you can add um, as many as those as you need to, obviously, however many faculties you have, we can add those, that number of faculties for you. Um, and we can also add departments for you as well. And then that will be available in the drop down when you're um, editing your courses. And again, is that something that customer support do for us? That's exactly right. So yeah, just get in touch by clicking on the uh, green icon down in the corner and that will open up a conversation with, our, with my team, the customer support mm -hmm. team. And you can ask us to make changes to faculties for you. Hmm. In in which apps um, is faculties used? Which is it most important? Okay, so um, we categorise courses into faculties, and that's used in the pre-applicant open days app specifically, um, and also in event manager. So it's quite important on that side of things, um, and it's also um, used a little bit in um, obviously the courses and subjects app itself, hmm. um, and also um, it can be used in other parts of the system just to um, sort of give you an idea of how a specific school or faculty is performing in reports as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem at all. So, okay, today we've covered um, two apps really. We've covered the courses and subjects app, which is this one here. And we've talked about faculties as well. Um, so if you've got any questions about either of these apps now that you've had a, um, a training session on them, then you can get in touch with us again using the little green icon down the top of the bottom there if you've got any burning questions. Or if you want to read more about those apps, you can go to the Help Center up the top here and just click Help, and that'll open up the help articles for the Courses and Subjects app. Um, thanks very much. Mm. Thank you, Steph. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks very okay. much. Bye. Bye.